I have no financial disclosure. 15 years ago and over a couple of months, I had 30 patients visited my clinic complaining from persistent epiphora, which started few weeks after doing phaco surgery for both eyes. Following comprehensive evaluation for patient history, surgical technique, all medications used intraoperatively and postoperatively, we concluded that the preservative in the eye drops, which was used postoperatively, had resulted in what we called at this time inflammatory punctal stenosis. Since that time, we could successfully manage hundreds of, and of hundreds of patients who were suffering from resistant epiphora secondary to inflammatory punctal stenosis. During coming few minutes, I am going to talk about inflammatory punctal stenosis, missing diagnosis and the treatment so it wouldn't be missed anymore. When we look to the image on the left side, we can see the punctal opening had been narrowed by a fibrous tissue. This is why, why we are calling this such stenosis as cicatricial or fibrous, fibrous punctal stenosis. And surgery, and surgery could be an option for management of epiphora in such cases. On the other hand, when we look to image on the right side, we can see punctal opening had been narrowed by congested edematous angry tissue. This is why we call such stenosis as inflammatory punctal stenosis, and surgery is not an option for management of such persistent epiphora in such cases. Conversely, it is absolutely prohibited. So, if surgery is contraindicated for management of persistent epiphora secondary to inflammatory punctal stenosis, how we could manage it? Let's go and see this patient, one of my patients who was suffering from persistent epiphora for more than five months, as she was giving many topical steroids and non-steroidal anti-allergic eye drops by her treating physicians and her condition was getting more worse. On examination, we can see the punctal orifice almost obstructed by congested edematous angry tissue. So patient's persistent epiphora is secondary to inflammatory punctal stenosis. So how we manage such case? Treatment protocol starts by applying topical anesthetic eye drops for both eyes. Then we soak a small piece of cotton pledged with topical anesthetic eye drops and place it in the fornix area close to the punctum. Then we apply topical anesthetic eye drops one more time. After that, we prepare 20 units of local anesthetic solution and 40 mg of long-lasting steroid injection. Usually, we wait for 5 minutes before removing the cotton bridget. Then we inject 10 units of local anesthetic solution close to the punctum from the conjunctival side, followed by injecting 20 mg of the long-lasting steroid injection at the same parapunctal area. The same procedure is repeated to the other eye. In follow-up, there was a clear regression in the degree of congestion, edema, and stenosis of the inflamed punctal orifice. At the same time, patients complained from persistent epiphora and its associated frustrating symptoms were improved dramatically. Post-injection, patients were advised to use only 
preservative free topical lubricant eye drops aiming to wash out any stagnant tears which you could aid in the recovery of the inflamed punctal opening. We can see here how much the punctum had improved and the opening start the obstructed opening started to widen and to get beaten again. For inflammatory punctal stenosis, stop all typically used eye drops. Don't use any eye drops as they have a preservative which could damage the punctum. Never touch the punctum, don't do surgery, and inject local long-acting steroid close to the punctum. Proper diagnosis and successful management of inflammatory punctal stenosis is very simple. Please don't miss it. Thank you.